Okay. Um, so we're live now, and it looks like we're just getting started with the draft. Um, today we'll be having Team Avatar versus Team Fashion Rats, with casting by uh, Jade and myself. Right. So as we get started here, uh, I don't remember watching any of these two teams. Do you have any insight of what uh, what team, what each team might pick? Yeah. So um, Team Fashion Rats. That's um, Ban, ugly, whatever on the right here. Um, their top laner is a t like plays a lot of Teemo as their top laner, so that <laughs> explains why we saw the Avatar ban. Um, on the other side, the top laner plays a lot of Camille, which is why we saw Camille as a reciprocal ban. So that's the mo most played champions of both top laners um, getting out there. And so I take it, uh, uh, rats like to play Vi, and Avatar likes to play Kha'Zix as well. Um, to some extent, I think that Kha'Zix right now is just like very unpopular in the hand, in the eyes of many players. Um, I'm not going to make right. any judgment about his actual strength, but um, I think that a lot of people have been placing a lot of emphasis on banning him lately. So I'm not really surprised to see a Kha'Zix ban here, as far as I know. Right, especially because he's especially annoying with, uh, with uh, was it Duskblade of Jackthar? Yeah, exactly. With the yeah. invisibility after kill. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we first see a, an Amumu coming out of the side of Avatar. Amumu being, being a very strong tank jungler that does a lot of damage because apparently we're currently in a tank meta. Yeah, for sure. Amumu has been proven to be one of the best tanks in the junglers um, in this preseason and has already received a like, pretty significant nerf, but he's still um, reigning at the top of the jungle right now. And we have a misfortune out from the side of rats. That will most likely be a crit misfortune. Lethality misfortune at first, uh, with uh, with probably Eclipse as her mythic. Right. But uh, you know, especially now, uh, lethality marksman, you know, Jin misfortune. They're especially powerful because lethality is just so strong, and uh, it's not really worth building any of the ADC uh, ADC mythics now. I see. Um, that second pick on the Wrath side is actually a Cho'Gath pick. Um. Quite interesting. I'm not. I'm not quite sure where it's going. Um, I th I think it's in the mid lane actually. Um, I could be wrong, but I think that in the past, uh, Van Amsterdam of Team Rats has played Cho mid. Hmm, it's weird. I see Zillion on my screen. Yeah, yeah. People mess up in pro draft a lot though, so mm -hmm. they actually intended for that to be a Cho Gath pick. <laughs> All right. Uh, so is that actually Seraphine? Yeah, Seraphine should be a right pick. Right. Now, I haven't really seen Seraphine lately. I'm extremely biased against her, but I actually don't know how viable she is, especially now. Mm. We've seen a good amount of Seraphine play in the tournament, actually. And um, in particular, I think that she has a lot of really powerful combos with these engaged champions. So, for example, mm -hmm. Amumu, as he walks in, provides a really easy um, like kind of target for her to extend her ult off of, which can be really powerful. The main right. pick in the bot lane as well... Um, Interesting. Yes, especially powerful with uh, her three-hit passive combined with most likely Kraken Slayer, which is also three-hit passive, and both do true damage. So once you hit that third hit, you're most likely dead if you're squishy. Mm -hmm. Funny you say that. I'm actually a really anti-Kraken Slayer on main. I feel like the extra damage really? is just really wasted. And mm -hmm. um, with Shield Bow, you live so much longer that you like have the potential to do so much more damage. Right. Uh, but we, actually, we have a Leona, so yeah, Shield Bow might be uh, might be favorable in vain. For sure. Uh, that Leona Misfortune lane is going to be really powerful throughout the early game, and like, especially against something like Vayne, it's um quite scary if she ever finds her stuff out of position. Right. And, you know, uh, the counter to Leona, especially early game, is to chunk her out level 1 so she can't go in level 2. But Vayne being a very late game champion, she can't do that. Yeah. So this bot lane from Rats is going to be extremely scary for that Vayne, who needs to scale. Now, do you think that will be a Seraphine mid or a Seraphine support? I'm pretty sure it's Seraphine mid. We've seen their mid laners just have played a lot of Seraphine in the past. Right. Yeah, okay. so I'm wondering who they'll pick to support the main. Lulu is definitely the traditional answer, and I think it does a good job of keeping main safe, but right. not quite Also, sure. Morgana as well It's open. Yeah, that would also be really good against Lena. But with uh, Morgana, the thing is, uh, with those two squishy laners, it's still very hard to deal with lethality misfortune. Right. Because, you know, that Q could just bounce and kill both of them at the same time. 
see. We have Volibear coming out. Uh, now that'll probably be Volibear Jungle, I take it. Perhaps. I'm not sure if it's jungle or top, actually. Right. Let's see this next pick from Avatar. Okay, so say. yeah, I, I don't know if that was intended. It might have just been a default pick, but um, we'll keep you guys updated. Oh, it's meant to be Pike. Interesting. Huh. Well, a Pike vein versus a uh, Misfortune Leona, uh, they will have a rough time. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I've, I've seen... Um, Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Um, Pike Vane is not a very strong bot lane, I feel. But um, that Kale pick, Kale is just like really strong right now with the new items. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that, yeah, that on definitely hit, is a... On hit Kale is very powerful. For sure. Now what will they pick to answer? Darius is banned out. Okay. Now, uh, I don't think that this uh, Nasus versus Kale top lane goes on the way of Nasus. Me neither. Yeah. I think that both of them scale really hard, but um, Kale definitely. Just that Kale it. can easily kite her out, kite him out, and he is going uh, on hit. For sure. So yeah, it this looks Nasus like will have a rough time. The Volibear is indeed in the jungle. Huh. So Chogoth mid. Uh. Okay. So, any predictions on how this game will go? Um, well, let's take the time to just like talk through each of the matchups in turn. Um, so starting with top lane, that's something we've already done so a little bit. Um, in the sense that both Kale and Nasus scale really hard, but Kale is like infinitely less tradable than Nasus. If I want your opinion, I'll right. beat it out of you. And concerning mid lane, uh, Cho'Gath versus a Seraphin. Yeah. Um. So Seraphine in the early game definitely should have a pretty free lane, um, given that it's a range versus melee matchup, she definitely has the tools necessary to kind of poke Cho'Gath out as she goes through CS. But um, as the game goes longer, Cho'Gath like, isn't able to resist that poke more and more. Um, and ultimately, if it's, I'm not sure if they'll be building AP or Tank Cho, but both present their own problems. AP Cho will have the opportunity to just kind of um, burst out the Seraphine uh, if she ever lands his Rupture, whereas um, Tank Cho will just not be killable by Seraphine. And we actually saw that in another match. I think it was also against Tashin Rats, where um, we had Seraphine versus Cho'Gath mid, and the Seraphine was a grand massive player, actually, but they just wasn't, they just weren't able to deal with the really tanky members of Tashin Rats team. Mm. Yeah, and, you know, looking at the side of Rats, they have four very strong tanks, and they, they, they need to do a lot to keep that misfortune alive, especially if she's going lethality or crit. Yeah. Um, I mean, Vayne is definitely a great pick into these tanks, but Vayne is definitely one of the AD carries that is probably harder to execute on. Especially if you have a uh, weaker uh, bot lane against a Misfortune Leona uh, and your support is a Pike, uh, he won't do much to protect you. Right. So is there any word about uh, that Lee Sin showing up? Or? Oh yeah, the Lee Sin is meant to be Pike. Hmm. Oh, is it just on uh, Pro? Yeah, um, they just messed up the Pro Draft again. Okay, that makes sense. It's all good. I do not cowardice. Yeah, in the bot lane, it's definitely very hard for the blue team bot lane. First of all, they just don't have any synergy as champions, and second of all, they're into, like, just one of the strongest um, traditional bot lanes. There's a lot of CC on the side of rats. Well, <clears throat> let's just see how it plays out.
In the jungle, I feel like um, Amumu is definitely like the flavor of the month pick here. But um, I'm not sure if um, they'll be able to pull it off. I know that like that's GG has played a bunch of Amumu in like the recent games, but ultimately it hasn't really um, been as impactful as they probably have hoped. And Mumu's power comes from his ganking ability and his tankiness. However, when you have a losing bot lane and your your top lane, well, I think top lane would be definitely a focus for a uh, would be a, a focus for blue uh, blue side because they need to push that Kale in and they need to keep this Nasus down. Right. Um, although we have brought up how like the top. The red side team is very tanky, and Amumu as a tank is probably one of the ones that does a lot of just extended damage to those um, other tanky champions, um, especially with the new items in Meandries and Demonic and Brace. Both of those are um, really um, amazing for shredding through bulkier enemy champions. Okay, um, so overall then, do you think that one team did a better job in draft here? Hmm. I definitely think Rats came out better in draft, uh, mainly focusing on that bot lane and on this, uh, and on the mid lane matchup. Yeah, because that Seraphine to is gonna have a yeah, that Seraphine is gonna have a very hard time against Cho'Gath late game. Although she does have a lot of wave clear early game, she kind of falls off, especially if uh, against a lot of tanks like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Although um, Kale definitely had Kale and Bane definitely do a great job of shutting through tanks in the late game. So I'm not sure if they're actually lacking too much on the damage front, especially with Amumu as well. Um, Seraphine provides some like helpful utility there. The Pike pick just like confuses me a lot. I don't really get what they're trying to do with that at all. But um Right. I might be surprised. Yeah. When looking at all these tanks, that Pike is gonna have a very hard time trying to uh get his reset off because they just have so much help they have to get through. Mm -hmm. And other than the vein and the kale, if they don't in you know uh Avatar's team is very late game heavy with the cane and the veil, or with the with the vein and the kale. Sorry, right. uh, but if they cannot, you know, wither down uh, red side the rats, then it'll be extremely difficult for that pike to pop off. That's true. Yeah. I'm curious, uh, is there any reason you didn't sign up for the tournament this semester? Hmm, excuse me? Oh, is there any reason you didn't sign up for the tournament this semester? Because <laughs> I'm absolutely trash at the game. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, especially, uh, uh, I'm a first year, so I feel like I wouldn't have much time, considering that I had to very quickly leave campus. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, maybe next semester then. But yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Be being like unskilled definitely isn't like a big impact in this tournament where um the teams are meant to be balanced anyways, so Right. <laughs> but overall I I'm completely fine with doing a caster job. It's still fun. That's good. I'm glad you enjoy it.
Okay, um, so this is one of the last weeks, last games we had in our round robin tournament, actually. And so um, things are pretty close on the line for these teams. Um, so the round robin matches don't matter that much aside from seeding, but it's definitely like bragging points and a big morale booster if you're doing well in the round robin stage. So I think right now Team Avatar is 2 3 in the records, whereas um, Fashion Rats are 4 1. So um, I think it'll be really tense for both teams as they try and claw closer towards that number two position because my team is the number one and I don't imagine that'll change. <laughs> okay. So as the spectator delay is over, um, I'm going to swap to the actual game. Looks like red team is opting for an invade on the top side. Um, I wonder if they'll be able to get away with that. Looks like Kale and Amumu are heading up there and we'll have eyes on them as they walk in. So red team really doesn't get a chance to do anything here. Oh, do you mind streaming on uh, Discord? Oh, sorry, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Mumu is seemingly able to walk in freely and get that ward into the top side jungle. Um, it could be very helpful for identifying where uh, Bolivar is going to be pathing. I'm kind of surprised that Red Team conceded that ward so easily, because um, it is a definite advantage. Although I guess Luna did get that, that ward around Raptors. It's not quite as helpful as the one um, that Blue Team was able to place. Right. Uh, so Mumu will probably start... Uh, he'll most likely start Blue. Because yep. uh, his crying passive, or his crying ability needs it. Yeah, he's still mad uh, I'm not quite sure what Bolivar is trying to do. It looks like they're trying to go for a level 1 invade. Okay, um, this could be pretty scary. Uh, but it looks like they kind of just have to concede it. It's going to be a smite war between Amumu and Bolivar here. As neither team a really high vision of the bush, or Amumu doesn't anymore. But um, Kale managed to get the blue buff, and with that... Um, Seraphine also manages to come in clutch to respond to the invade earlier. Bolivar has splashed out and just ends up dying here. Um, so things don't seem to be going too well for the uh, red team in that invade. Not quite sure what they were thinking uh, when they didn't know where Mumu was starting, just walking in there like that. Right. And you know, the late invade would actually work, but they were just too early on it. Yeah, with, with Kill there and Seraphine being able to respond faster, they really didn't have a chance. And Kale is not only, she got first blood, so yeah. uh, not only does she have blue uh, blue buff, but she has first blood, and this Nasus is going to have a really tough time. Yeah, it seems, looks like he's feeling it already. He's going to have wow, to back he almost after that. died. <laughs> really unfortunate. Yeah. Wow, that Chogoth did a lot of damage. Yeah. It's Gets definitely not a fun them. matchup for Seraphine if you're like Lucy and you get hit by every skill card. Arlene is going relatively evenly actually. Uh, Vayne's keeping up in CS. Um, but once Leona hits level 3, I think it becomes that much more threatening for the blue team bot lane. Yeah, um, Pike also does not really have the tools to like disengage Luna, um, as opposed to some of the more traditional enchanted sports, but I guess he is able to draw 
more damage off of her um, because of his very health mechanic. Um, I wonder if that will come in handy, but I still am not really quite sure what is going on with Pike Victor. Yeah, his E can stun Leona if she ever goes in, but it looks like to be a small trade on mid lane. Yep. Cho ultimately seems to have walked out ahead. Um, his passive is doing a great job of keeping him healthy here. He just cleared that big wave with his Q and E and got a lot of health and mana out of it. Yeah, so this Pike, uh, Pike has a little bit of disengage with his E, but as soon as Leona, uh, Leona E's in, Pike E's in, but he is already inside. Yeah, and like the hook is somewhat useful for pulling Leona, I guess, but at the same time, if Leona doesn't have to do that, she's already used her entire combo and there's not that much point in looking her. And I don't think you really want to pull in that Leona. Yeah. That's what she wants. <laughs> When we was looking for the gank onto um, Nasus, uh, Kayla's already had a, such a huge advantage so far. To get the kill here, it could really be disastrous for Nasus. The Bandage Toss hits onto Nasus. Uh, they pick up the kill onto Nasus, but we see the TP from Togat. Um, Seraphine's unable to interrupt it, and with that, I think Kayla might have to uh, sacrifice himself here for Mumu to walk out. All right. Actually, I think it's a good thing for Blue Side. Not only does the Kale get the kill, but they did burn Chogat's, uh, they did burn Chogat's teleport. Right. Anasus really doesn't get much from there, um, but Kale is getting really strong already. You want to go into the engage, but that, that's really not a good position. Oh, the Pike is coming in handy as they, um, hook the Leona into turret as she takes a few extra shots. Um, Main taking a lot of damage from Misfortune though and not really getting much out of it. Um, they do manage to clean up the kill onto Leona, but I think Vayne is going to die here. Ooh, Misfortune misses a ward and yeah. Scorch Splash. However, he should be able to get this kill onto Pike as well. Yeah. Oh, no, never mind. I think Pike just walks out here. So, um, I think trading right now is probably... Like, that trade is probably in favor of Misfortune, who has the chance to... Uh, push this out and get some more CS while main kind of just died for the Yona. Um, and with that early kill um, early on, Misfortune makes a lot more um, use of that early gold compared to main. So um, if she backs with the Serrated Drake, for example, that could be really annoying for main and Pike to deal with. Yeah, this Misfortune is going lethality, and she also does have Dark Harvest, so uh, she scales rather well. Yeah. So you know they're straight going down in the top lane. Um, the Wither comes out, but I think that Kale is still able to DPS through that. And after that Wither's off cooldown, it becomes that much easier for Kale to trade with Nasus. And they kind of, she kind of just forces Nasus off um, because without his Wither, he can't move to me. Red team is sneaking a quick dragon here. Um, blue team looks like they have no idea what's happening. But even if they did, I don't know if they would really be able to stop it. Oh, Amumu goes in and. Tries to steal, but unfortunately he doesn't manage to get anything. Kale's coming in for the TP. Um, the bot lane also comes down. A mid lane comes down to join the fight. And yeah, Vayne missed that down, otherwise I think it would have been a kill on Tiana. The Seraphine Encore comes out and um, Kale with the Divine Judgment saves her own life while at the same time uh, cleaning up the Leona. So that was really good also on Kale's part. Um, also spells disaster for the Misfortune who is left in a 1v3 and unable to do much there. So, great TP from the kill overall. Um, even if the play was perhaps not executed to the best of the abilities of Blue Team, um, ended up pretty well for them. Right. Yeah, Nasus really didn't even have a chance. Oh no, he did. Okay. I thought he didn't uh, push in the wave. Okay. Kill did miss some CS there, but. Picked up another kill and two assists, I think. And keep in mind, this is just Kale. Uh, she's uh, she's still melee. She doesn't yeah. even have a range form. So as soon as she hits six, you know, when she hits her power spikes at, at 11 and 16, she's just gonna get stronger and stronger. She's already two, one, and three. Yeah. She was she was six for that fight already though, so she was ranged. But um, there's definitely still a lot of um, growth that Kale will experience throughout this game. 
That just means this Nas is gonna have an even harder time. Yeah, now now that uh, lane is a range versus melee lane, so um, not sure what Nas is gonna do about that. He is doing a pretty good job of keeping up in CS, though. Yeah, that lethality misfortune is still putting in a lot of damage onto the end, even though Bane is technically a high damage. Yeah. However, this uh, blue side bot lane is actually doing very well, keeping safe, staying on the tower, and make sure that Leona doesn't have a chance to ult in Push or in. a chance to E in. And at the same time, despite being pushed in, they were able to um, stay relatively close in CS. So, that team appears to be three manning the top lane, but um, they've been spotted by a ward in the river, so uh, I don't think they're going to get anything out of that. The jungle difference is um, fairly big right now with um, Bolivar being... Well, Bolivar was two levels up until just now, after we were finished red. And also pretty far up in CS. With the Drake under his belt as well. Leona like barely misses that E. Yeah. I, I don't know if she even wanted it though, because Amumu's here and she's looking for the gank. Um, I don't know if he's going to be able to get it. The Banish Toss is going to... Oh no, he's just going to flash in the Christmas hat and Lamy comes out. Pike manages to hook uh, Leona off of that free stand. So, um, I guess that's where the Pike comes in handy. It makes following up with these and remove ganks a lot easier. The Encore comes out from Seraphine into the turret, and ultimately, I think it's actually going to pick up the cone for wow. about read it a bit for um, Seraphine, it seems. Yeah. I believe that was a bit greedy out of that Shogoth, trying to go for the kill. Yeah, absolutely. Seraphine tries to play around her turret here, but little does she know it's been disabled by the Stormbringer. Um, so Volibear managed to clean up the kill there. Lumu's looking for the 1v1 in the mid lane, but he's so much weaker than Volibear right now. Nasus is going in on the kill? Yeah, uh, Nasus was really trying to take advantage of this period where he does have the level advantage, and I think, or no, the items appear to be even still. But he did take a pretty good trade on the kill. Um, but because he's out of mana, he has to back now. And he did burn his ult while, even if he did try to go for the kill, uh, Kale still had her ult. So uh, I don't believe it will have gone well inside of uh, Nasus. Yeah. Yeah, this Seraphine with those early kills and assists um, is doing a lot more damage to Hogath now than before, so that's definitely really helpful in keeping in um, making sure that he can't just keep up with those passive sustain. Leona, Leona has been hitting the these uh, spears, but ultimately they're not in great positions. Oh, the bullet time does a great job of killing the Pike and doing a lot of damage to the main, and with that, uh, Red Team leaves with a double kill on MF. Right. So, That's the power of uh, Lethality MF. She just bursted that Bane down. For sure, and I mean, that is really just what that traditional combo in Misfortune plus Yona does best. They CC you, and then they kill you with the Bullet Time and the Solar Flare. Red team, though, is doing a good job of keeping control of the objective. That's their second dragon. Um, and they're actually up in gold despite the kill difference. So that's probably just a function of the CS differences in the jungle, mid lane, and bot lane. Um, but I wonder if they know that at this point. Um, on top of that, the gold um, the gold value from the dragon is probably an added 1,000. So they're about 2,000 up in gold value here. Seraphine um, appears to have been caught out and is just looking to get executed in their base. Um, looks like it worked out, but Umu is taking another bad trade in the mid lane. Um, uh, looks like on top. Oh wow, every, every lane is fighting. Yeah, um, the only gets great engage onto Vayne with the solar flare um, following up onto the CC. Uh, the die for Nasus doesn't seem to have worked out with both sides uh, burning their flash, but Kale ultimately picking up the kill onto Bolivar, or sorry, onto Nasus as he flashes in. 
So there was a quick kill onto uh, onto Moon Moon mid lane. Oh right, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, there were kills <laughs> across the map here. I feel like that top engage, that top dive was just unlucky. They both flash at the exact same time. And, yeah, that's uh, definitely goes right outside his range for his Q. We see a 2v2 skirmish going on between Kale, Seraphine, and Bulliver and Toe. Uh, Kale has finished with Nash's Swift, she's doing a lot of damage now, and we see that as uh, she's threading through both Bulliver and Togath. Um, they do manage to kill the Bulliver, and the blue buff is on Kale once again, making Nash's life that much harder. And this is what happens when you don't, you don't shut down that Kale early. For sure. Um, on the other side of the map, though, it looks like Red Team did finish taking that bot turret after the double kill. Uh, sorry, after the kill onto Bane there. Um, so Miss Fortune is really strong now, and I think she's finished her e hits as well. So that's going to be pretty scary for the blue team. So Seraphine and uh, Kale both back off, unwilling to take that mid turret. Mm -hmm. Looks like Kale's going back to catch that top wave. The gold deficit is still really big um, in favor of the red team. Probably uh, the other factor now is that they did get that first turret bot plane, um, as well as all the plays they came with it. So. Oh, this poor Nasus just yeah, getting run too. down. <laughs> really shutting to him now. Looks like Moon was heading bot lane. Ooh, but he gets spotted out by one. So Rift Herald is dropped bot lane, just trying to take down that uh, bot lane turn, trying to free up this vein to go mid lane. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was dropped perhaps a bit preemptively. Uh, it, it really didn't do that much. Took just a bit over half of that turret's health. And I think it definitely would have been better to use mid lane where it could have actually cracked open that turret. Right, and I, I believe they should have dropped it earlier if they had it earlier. Ooh, quick engage onto Seraphine in mid lane. Yep, the solo player comes out uh, with the perfect sign of attention to Seraphine, followed by the Volibear is done. Um, really just spells disaster for squishy champions like that. Right. And you know, Red Team has this very CC heavy team in that Volibear, and especially Leona. Yeah, and uh, Cho'Gath on top of that too. Right. Looks like they're seizing mid now. With the 4v4, uh, the Curse of the Sad Mummy is going to hit only Leona, actually. Uh, but with the bullet time, they're actually able to turn the tide of that fight. Killing Pike. Uh, going to kill Mumu as well. Ooh, Misfortune Q barely reaching in, killing them, Mumu. Yeah. Um, and Mumu really shouldn't have just flashed in there, I feel. Um, if he bandage tossed and then flashed, it might have been a lot easier to hit his Curse of the Sad Mummy, Curse of the Sad Mummy on more members of the red team. Right. And what's amazing is that Leona, that the Leona still survived through yeah. a combination of her W and Aftershock. It's just amazing how tanky she is with so little items. Okay. And uh, looks like now Fire, uh, Fire Drake is coming up in 15 minutes or 15 seconds, and Red Team's looking to take that. Mm -hmm. Nasus is now about caught up with Kale and CS, so he's not doing too bad for himself either. Now, how do you feel about uh, a potential fire uh, fire soul? Um, the infernal soul onto red team is definitely going to be very scary, especially with lethality misfortune. It's going to pop teams even harder now. Um, and I know we talked a bit about like builds on Bane, and I will say again, but I think that Kraken Slayer on Bane is extremely cool. Um, I think that that's a lot of the reasons that they've been getting blown up by this Luna uh, misfortune bot lane. Um, with shield boat, I think that a lot of those engages might have turned out very differently because Bane just doesn't get blown up immediately. Died, I guess. <laughs> so it looks like both teams are just quickly resetting.
And looking at the current state of the game, it definitely seems that red team is getting this better side, even though uh, they had a less than ideal, less than ideal early game. Uh, they're up, they're up by what, five k gold at this point. Um. Yeah, in terms of like gold, individual gold differences, Misfortune is about two items up. That's almost an entirely tally item. Um, Heal's about 2,000 gold up as well. Um, it shows in how strong she feels right now. Um, Amumu is down about 2,000 gold, whereas Seraphine is down just 1k. So, still pretty even, definitely anyone's game. But Red Team is uh, certainly taking better control of these objectives here, getting that Rift Herald as well. Volibear takes it. Looks like they're trying to do something top lane. Oh, but they're spotted out by Control Ward. Mm -hmm. But that does force the bot lane on the blue team to have to back off of that first turret, and you can see it even more fun. Hopefully blue team is able to take advantage of their position on the bot side here, and maybe take that turret. It looks like instead of Mumu is just going to back, and... Oh no, never mind, he's coming. But I think that between the two of them, they can definitely kill Nasus and potentially even take the turret here. I'm not sure if that's what's actually going to happen there. Um, Red Team, on the other hand, appears to be sneaking a Baron right now, um, as Mumu and Kale are uh, spending a lot of time. But Mumu is looking for Nasus, but I don't know if he's really going to be able to find anything there. Um, Blue Team really just isn't in a position to contest this Baron at all. And I don't. I wonder if they even know that the Baron is being taken. Yeah, I don't believe there's any wars or... I don't believe they even saw them. Yeah, just now, with that vision coming, they see that team as they finish off the Baron. Chogath gets a free beast stack. And it's basically a second smite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, the gold gap has climbed to 6,000 now, and with Baron, Red Team definitely has the potential to uh, make some strong pushes here. Nasus is um, side laning um, as well as Trim, and it looks like they're opting for 1v1 to make advantage of that Baron buff in as many places as possible. Seeing a few skirmishes, but nothing's really going on as Red Team is pressing that 1v1. Um, no one is responding to Togath right now. It looks like Kale's going up there right now. Um, uh, Amumu is splash ulting, but there's really no follow up there. Um, it's just Ooh, Seraphine. Big Seraphine ult, yeah, but... but they don't have the DPS to follow up on that. Um, right. And the bullet time from Misfortune just cleans up, destroys both of them. Yeah. And all the while that the while the the Bane tries to move up and help, uh, this Nas is just being able to free farm, especially that Cho as well. Yeah, pretty unfortunate. The silence stops um, Caleb from being able to ult herself. Um, and the last she dies. She gets punched. Back. Ooh, Rift Herald just dropped bot lane to crack this uh, low this inhibitor turret. And considering they stop Baron buff, it should be free. Yeah, this might even be game here. Um, Red Team doesn't seem to have any intention of stopping. They still have that um, Rift Hill coming in. Oh man. Uh, the Rift Hill has fallen, but they still have four members of the enemy team. Two inhibitors down and bear buff. Nasus is a force to be reckoned with. And with both Main and Tail um, dead, they don't really have any means of finishing them off. And with that, Bane was, was just Bane. deleted. It was just absolutely terrible. Now, I think the biggest deciding factor of this game is just that 
red team had a very good control of all the objectives. Yeah, that's good. Um, a lot of the early game fights uh, went in the favor of blue team, but I think just like macro wise, um, some like sloppy play just right. It looked very promising for blue team, especially since the uh, the Kale and the Vayne both got early kills. However, they were just not able to uh, effectively transition into uh, into mid game. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was a relatively short game, but still a pretty close one. Um, definitely could have gone either way, but yeah. Uh, I think we'll have a lot more games coming in tomorrow, and with that. Um, Yeah, uh, we're going to sign up for now. See you next time. All right. Thank you for tuning in, and we hope you had a very nice holidays. Mm -hmm. Happy Thanksgiving.